You're listening to The Radcast, a top 25 worldwide business podcast. If it's radical, we cover it. Here's your host, Ryan Alford. What's up, guys? Welcome to the latest edition of The Radcast. It's Friday, January 12th, 2020. 24, our weekly marketing and business news of the week, and our favorite small talk with my best friend, my good buddy, my little buddy, Chris Hansen. <laughs> What's up, Hello, brother? man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, dude. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Happy to uh, another weekly news, news radcast, brother. I know. It is. I mean, the people what they need. Bringing the people the news they need and the news they don't, and a little in between. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's for sure. <laughs> oh, it's been a good week we for you. This week, been a good week so far. Yeah, man. It's. Uh, I feel like we're back in the swing of things in 2024. Yep. So, getting into mid January yeah. already. It's you know, wild. We'll I feel like Christmas. And it will just, be you know, March 15th. And we're like, whoa, it's getting warm in the spring. You know, the faster we get out of these uh, winter doldrums, the better. We got this cold front coming through with the highs in the mid forties here in the Carolinas. It's just not natural, man. It's no bueno. What's the weather? What's the, nice temp, what's the temp in Miami today? It's about 75. Oh God. Nice. Yeah. 75 and sunny. Oh, I will say that it's been, <laughs> it's been nasty though. The past couple of days, just cloudy and dull. Yep. I think everyone on the East coast is kind of getting a little bit of weather right now. Yes. We had rain galore. We had flooding all galore here at the office, but hopefully everyone's dry, warm and safe out there, wherever you are, whenever you are where you might be listening, whether you're on the treadmill, if you're running, driving in the car, or making a sandwich at the house. You never know. But we appreciate you for making us the number one show on Apple in marketing and business. And, you know, the Consumer Electronics Show is going on uh, pretty much as we speak, Chris. And this first article, which comes to us from our good friends at NBC, uh, those guys are <laughs> stand up guys over at NBC. <laughs> we love them. We love those guys in NBC <laughs> News. Um, so uh, everything's about AI now, right? We all know that. And so this one, you know, tickled my fancy. It, you know, it could be a mocktail for you, but you know, an AR AI yeah. bartender makes drinks down with that. based on customers' moods. The CES show. That's the Consumer Electronics Show for me and you. In Las Vegas is featuring a new kind of bartender, an AI-powered robot that will mix you a drink based on your mood. It's uh, basically we're moving to robots in the house. I'm telling you, we're going to have it. The robot's going to be like, no, no, sir. If you're not having a whiskey Coke, we're going to make you something else because we need to fix that mood right now. But let's think about how – let me just give everybody – so I'm going to ground everyone in time and place here with a movie. So in Rocky three, my numbers might be wrong, but I think it's Rocky three. This is when it was Mr. T. <laughs> uh, Rocky gave his, one of his trainer buddies, a housekeeper robot that like went around and would like talk to him. As my math recalls, this is like late eighties. And so, you know, in the late 80s, we had housekeeper robots that I guess the very rich and wealthy had. They certainly didn't have the AI capabilities, but now we're just now moving towards the AI bartender. So, like, are we ahead or are we behind, folks? That's what I want to know. And if you don't remember that, you need to go watch that Rocky movie. I just remembered that when it made me think of this one, seeing this, and I'm like, okay. Imagine in your house you had a housekeeper, a bartender, like, an all-in-one well, AI what I was robot. Thinking. I'm like, <laughs> can we not like also program it to do some more like useful stuff? <laughs> yeah, cut the grass. Like, what else can you do for me to help my mood besides make me a drink? <laughs> yeah, like, can you clean? Do my laundry? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, like, it's, help me out with the important decisions here. Exactly. Can you fold my clothes? Can you yeah. wash the dishes? You know, like I, I'm all for a drink, but you know, let's get practical here with what these robots can yeah. do. 
So uh, don't tell me we're just stuck at the Roomba. <laughs> like you got to have more coming at me than the Roomba. Uh, yeah, exactly. Can we put a body on the Roomba? <laughs> you know? I love my Roomba. Yeah. Everybody seems to swear about those things. And I don't know. We, we're probably like, or like a family in a house with all hardwoods, like most likely that should have a Roomba, but don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I need it for skeptical. the dog care. I feel like I, I don't know. Like want to punt that thing if, I was, if you came zooming by me or does it come out while you're sleeping? And then I'd hear it at no, night. I, I, <laughs> you said when it goes out, if honestly, there's days I'll stand there for like four minutes and just watch it. And I'm like, um, technology. You're like, man, it's productive at its job. <laughs> like, how does it, how does it get around those cords? Like, especially in this corner where, I, where I record at, I mean, it's around can't see it. it on camera, but there's cords and wires everywhere. And it's, <laughs> Is it just avoid them? That's a good job. <laughs> yeah, it? I mean, it'll get Bump stuck up against for a them. few minutes. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. I was watching it the other day, and I was like, and they're telling us these things are going to kill us. This thing can't even figure out how to get around this cord right now. <laughs> we but, should set up a video of, like, trying to trick the Roomba. Like, just cords and shit everywhere. You know, like, <laughs> see how smart it really I, is. That's what I picture they they do in the R&D. They're just like, all right, let's throw a bunch of random shit on the ground and obstacles and just yeah. see what this thing can do. I'm going to throw some thumbtacks, some three-in-one oil, get this thing sliding all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> a few socks. <clears throat> Congratulations if you're a Michigan fan. Uh, you know, it's not a sports show, but we're, we're, got, we're dudes and – a lot of dudes listen. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of Michigan fans, women. It's not just a dude thing, by the way. My wife was into it. We were no, watching it, not. but it's historically, you know, the dudes sitting around couches like overeating, over drinking. But um, no, Michigan uh, was a better team and sort of manhandled Washington. And uh, did you watch any of that game? I didn't. I saw yeah. like the highlights on social media, but I didn't. I yeah. didn't sit down and watch it. Either. It was it was good first half. Like Michigan was going to pound them. They ultimately ended up pounding them, but uh, it was you know it was, a, it was an entertaining game for the most part. It's amazing what cheating will do for you. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get some hate mail for that, but you know, cheating. Yeah. They say cheaters never win. <laughs> I'd like to beg to differ. Uh, so, have, you know, they've been doing sign nice stealing or whatever they've been doing. So, uh, congratulations to the cheaters. Uh, no, nah, I don't, who knows? Sign, that, <laughs> some of that stuff is so bogus. Like, stealing signs, like, not every, it, like, every team isn't stealing signs. Come on, man. You know, like, doing some scouting. All he's doing is, like, deploying, like, NFL tactics in college. It's like, let's make the guy sit out for a couple games. It's dumb. Anyway, congrats to Michigan. They do deserve it. I don't think they're cheaters. I just think the game is whack, and someone had it out for them. It'd be interesting if old uh, Harbaugh sticks around and goes back to the NFL. He's probably going to say screw it after dealing with that bullshit. So congratulations, you yeah, Wolverines. They do have, like, one of the best mascots in, like, jerseys. It's like, who wouldn't want to be a Wolverine? Yeah. I mean, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know. You got some of these mascots that are like, eh, at least I grew up with a tiger. I mean, that was ours. I Tigers, was a, Wolverines, I was that's tough. Yeah. UCF was the, it was the Golden Knights and they changed to the Knights, which, but I never felt like that was, honestly, I didn't think that was a badass mascot. I was, <laughs> I was more of like a Seminole fan, yep. Gator fan. Seminole's cool, but you know, like Alabama, the Crips of Tide, it's kind of like an elephant or something. You know, like if yeah. you look at their at their mascot, it's like okay, Crimson Tide sounds cool, but then they're yeah. they're like absolute the animal or something. It's like an elephant. So, I, yeah, I don't know the connection there, but uh, yeah, that's past my knowledge base for the uh, for the. Hey, uh, but they play good football. They do play so. good football. Don't always make up who it is. So, congrats to Michigan. And look, I'll, you know, back to marketing. Lots of commercials, but let me tell you. For as big as that game was and how many people were watching it, watched well, the same commercials over and over again. They weren't even new commercials. And I know it's not the Super Bowl, but geez, like, can we get some fresh commercials mm -hmm. or something? It was the same shit over and over again. If I see John Travolta as Santa Claus one more time, 
dancing to uh, whatever it is on Capital One. <laughs> it's like, I mean, look, it's January 10th, you know, like 8th or whatever it was. It's like Christmas was three weeks ago, two weeks ago. So we go, yeah. Like, I, I love Santa Claus most anybody, but there are, they must be get they must have gotten good rankings or good ratings for that commercial to start. I guarantee you their scores were high. And so they've been wearing that shit out. And my even my wife was like, the first time she saw it, oh, I like that commercial, you know, fun music. And now she was like all but throwing um, <laughs> plates th- through the TV. <laughs> all right, I'm over it. But TOMA people, top of mind awareness, they've got it. Capital One. Already have one. I got my adventure card. So uh, getting those points, baby. I will say, I'll take time to say I'll be in Mexico on Saturday. The family's headed out of town. So uh, a little R&R. For the Alfreds, so I will be sipping on a Mai Tai about this time tomorrow, Chris, just for the record. I, I love that for you. I, I hope really it, do. I really hope it's an AI bartender, though. <laughs> it, that that speaks Spanish. Ask next. That only speaks Spanish. Then, you know, he can guess He's my like, mood. No, no, senor. <laughs> Margarita <laughs> Peretti. <laughs> I know best, not you. Yes. <laughs> Por favor. Uh Senor, senor AI bartender, you know, I love the, I love Mexico. We go there every year almost. Damn. Good people, good fun. Gets a bad rap on the news. You know, it's not totally all, agree. a lot of good people down there. Don't, don't believe the news. I don't believe everything. Don't get me wrong. I don't want our yeah. borders being crushed. So I'm not saying sure. that, but the people are amazing. So uh, shout out to the Mexican 100%. people and the offers are coming for some loving for you and for us. The uh, NFL sees huge spikes in TV viewers. This also comes from our friend, good friends at NBC. Uh, it's in its biggest season since 2015. So the rank, the ratings are up, folks, for the NFL. And it's all due to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I was just going to ask, what do you think this is because of the Kelsey Swift love entanglement? I don't think it hurts. I'll tell you that. I don't think it's all that. But. No, definitely not. Those videos of her in, in the box suites at the games is it's great marketing. It says uh, the NFL's regular season games drew an average of 17.9 million viewers, matching the second highest figure since 1995, this represents a 7% increase from the previous season attributed to the league's newest television contracts and at least 24% growth in two of the five packages. Notably, 2015 holds the record with an average of 18.1 million viewers. I think there's more places to watch it. I think YouTube took on uh, and did a really good job marketing the NFL Sunday ticket package. And then, you know, I think there's just, yeah, prime video on Thursday nights. There's more places to watch it. So I think the total opportunity with streaming and things like that's gotten better. And I do think there's like these subplots. I mean, I think the Taylor Swift played into it a little bit, but you're not, look, the Packers Bears game viewership didn't go up because of Taylor Swift. You know, like it's like, right. I think individual games with, with the Chiefs certainly probably spiked. But I do think, you know, it's it brought more it, – it may have like a halo effect by bringing a new audience to the game, and then maybe oh, they're I, sticking around. This? Do you think with now the kind of the normalization of the sports betting too, where – Yeah, that's absolutely. Become much – at least for, for a guy like me, that would get me more into – like if I'm betting on these games, I'm going to – my viewership is going up 100%. There's a direct correlation with the legalization increasing in betting, the opportunity to bet, ESP had bet, yeah. you know, like all these things that are <laughs> yeah. making it more mainstream. Literally. And then more people watching it. Because I can tell you this, you know this, like if you got a little wager in the game, you're more likely to watch it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit, I'm invested, literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're invested. And so I think as that, proliferates it's better for the nfl and so what does this mean from a marketing and business standpoint <laughs> unfortunately the big get bigger because if you can afford a, a sponsorship and or tying your name or having you know any type of the nfl it's going to be good i mean that's why you're seeing things like okay non things like 
wine. If you've noticed, the official sponsor of like wine sponsor is like I want to say Barefoot, or like one of the uh, one of the bit the wine drinks you can. I think it's Barefoot is the name of it, but yeah, you can get so it. One of the well known Justin or Barefoot. Yeah, or something, something you could get in the, any every gro- grocery store. And so you're seeing the commercials like that, and that that's not something you would normally seem tied to it, but people just know the scale and scope. And you know that there's yeah. both men and women, and look, wine has gotten more popular. Um, might skew towards women. And so there's a ton of women watching the NFL too. So it's like mm, um, for sure. you've got these audiences increasing. And so tying yourself to the NFL and football, and look, here's your little inside tip. Coming up, it's early. Playoffs are just starting, so go ahead and plan. You can't use the word Super Bowl, but you can say the big game. So, in your marketing, <laughs> as you start doing it, saying, you know, come out and watch the big game, or we've got, you're selling TVs, you're selling furniture, you're selling anything related to a, a Super Bowl experience, just talk about the big game. That's what they do. You're going to see a lot of that language coming up. The big it's game's coming right up. There. And uh, go ahead and start planning the Super Bowl parties. And if you're a brand, you know, tie yourself to NFL. Not a bad place to be. If you could, if you can afford it, if you can't, then you just get smart and indirectly do it. Host uh, watch parties, those kind of things. So more to come there. And if you want to learn from me directly, join my newsletter, ryanoffer.com backslash newsletter. Sign up. I give daily advice on marketing, personal branding, podcasting, life. Give that a shout. Join that. It's free. It's daily. Just like this show. Give away our best advice. The Tito's. Back to liquor. Had to get back quickly, Chris. You know? Get back to it. <laughs> Tito's introduces. <laughs> <laughs> this show is, uh, you know, is uh, addicted liquor, to alcohol. football, Taylor Swift, <laughs> and Elon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tito's introduces a roguish spokes cart in rye de- in rye rebuke of celebrity liquor ads okay tito's handmade vodka an austin texas based brand is launching its first ever brand platform with tito's is the name of that featuring four new commercials without any celebrity endorsements instead of instead the ads created by a creative company to be named, feature a unique spokes cart, a drinks cart that appears in various scenarios, enhancing the moments with its presence in Tito's Vodka. Designed to reflect Tito's brand qualities, laid back, warm, and a bit imperfect. Mirroring the handcrafted nature of the vodka, the new advertising approach will be used across social and digital platforms. The initiative marks a shift towards a unifying brand platform for Tito's, aiming for consistency across various marketing channels. It's currently the top spirits brand in the U.S. by retail dollars. Interesting enough. I remember when it was nothing. I remember when that stuff first started taking off like 15 years ago or something. Tito's. Yes. You guys have Tito's? You know. But, um, and I personally don't think it tastes that great, and I'm not a huge vodka drinker. But anyway... <laughs> Not this episode, not brought to you by Tito's, uh, but uh, Kettle One's actually where it's at. If you want the best vodka, t- the best price, uh, Kettle One can sponsor us. Uh, but here's the deal I do like it's kind of spokes cart. I get it, spokesperson, spokes cart. At first, I was like, that's a really hard word to say, but I get where they're going with this. They want to make it all they're trying to do here is instead of making the celebrity the hero, they're making the product the hero, which is, I get it. it and it makes sense. Um, I, I think it just means they don't really want to pay for a spokesperson, you know, or they don't really want to pay a celebrity. And I and look, there's there's two sides of the coin when you do borrowed interest. So I believe in it personally, uh, it, especially 99% of the time. It has value, shared interest. But Tito's isn't wanting to share the stage with insert celebrity name here. They want the... They want the product to take center stage and to be the hero. So they're not sharing their own interest with the celebrity and vice versa. They're owning it themselves. And I think, look, when you are the number one spirits brand in the U.S., you have that that top of mind awareness already. You probably play this game. I don't know that every brand can play that game. 
I'd have to see the executions to uh, truly evaluate. But that's what's happening from a marketing perspective. They don't want uh, any shared uh, or lost brand equity in sharing the stage along with they've probably spent their money elsewhere and don't really want to pay a celebrity million dollars to uh, be in the commercial as well. So they have a spokes cart. This cart better be really good looking and have really big wheels (laughs) 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 or something like that, Chris. (laughs) Oh, I have no (laughs) comments. Better have some shiny wheels on the, uh, on those uh, rims on those wheels. Uh, Who knows? Bling bling on that cart. Not just the Tito's. Uh, Yeah. I'm interested to see it. I want to see the execution. Yeah. We'll see. Tito's. Spokes cart. Bounty in, it, in the NFL. Greats clean up after wings and football talk. Parter and Gamble's Bounty Paper Towels is gearing up for the NFL playoffs and Super Bowl with exclusive social content featuring football duos and messy game day wings. Campaign building on last year's Super Bowl focus includes a four and a half minute YouTube titled Wingman Stories Spill the Sauce. Featuring Rob Gronkowski and Rob Gronkowski in every NFL commercial. Uh, and Julian Edelman discussing their football careers while cleaning up with bounty towels. The series will continue with the second episode featuring Cincinnati Bengals players Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Hey, I like T. Higgins, Clemson University, baby. Wide receiver you. Along with additional content featuring Philadelphia Eagles and Buffalo Bills players. The campaign aims to capitalize on the popularity of wings during the Super Bowl. And position Bounty as the go-to paper towel choice for cleaning up the mess. All right. You know, back to big brands get bigger. Partnering with the NFL, wings, players, messes, Bounty. The quicker picker upper. <laughs> That's good marketing. Top of mind. I knew that one. I didn't even have to think yeah. about it. Could you have named that camp? Could you have named that tagline right there, Chris? Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah. imprint, it's imprinted in my brain. Exactly. That is... Yeah. Branding of the quicker picker up county. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Remember it was like the big dude. <laughs> the jingle. Yeah. They had, they had like the big giant dude like out in the woods, right? Well, none of them the thing. Bounty. <laughs> Something like that. Yes. That was like a very yes. old campaign. Yeah, it ate myself. You know, like with streaming and everything else, you just don't see the, the classic ads like you used to. But I'm hoping I see some wings getting picked up by Ron Grakowski. That's all I want to say. I want to see like wing sauce all over Rob's face. <laughs> I could see that. Don't you feel like Gronk's everywhere a little bit? Yeah, he's a wild man. <laughs> but he's he's a good business guy, obviously, because he's. Yeah, he's the, so when you think ads. about like after football, who's been as active? I'm, in marketing, on shows, on NFL shit. Like, That's what I was going to say. Who's been more active like than that guy? Yeah. <laughs> like he's, if, even if you're not watching football, you probably know who he is. And, and because he's a, he's a personality. I mean, the dude is, he's out there, he's partying. Yeah. He's kind of a bro, it seems like. Yeah. He's clearly more intelligent than people probably want to give him credit for. Like being for the football sure. jock. And yeah, you know, when he does an analysis and everything, he knows what he's talking about. And he's on every other commercial that's like menswear to he's shoes. Like a Kevin Hart to me. He's yeah. kind of like auto insurance, Capital One, whatever. Like he's doing it. Yes, he is. So props to him. Props to him. Props also to Vacay, the official sponsor of the Radcast. Take a vacay.com, V-A-Y-C-A-Y.com. I'm holding in my hand multiple jars of our sleep gummies, which is my favorite product. I don't trouble with sleep very much, but I keep this. It's the only thing I keep next to my bedside table, uh, literally, because if I wake, if I have any, if I have any thought that I'm going to struggle with sleep that night, I'm popping a half, half one of these babies. You know, we believe in premium third-party lab-tested products, and we do that with everything that we sell and low doses on stuff. It's not about getting high. It's about taking care of the mood or the need that you have in the moment, and that's one of my favorite and one of our favorite products. We're restocking our two-pack gummies because they're so popular. 
You can get a two pack and try it. We'll have that back up on the website soon. But look, let me tell you, you don't need to wait for that. You just need to go to takeavacay.com, V-A-Y-C-A-Y. Check out those sleep gummies. Check out all of the products from Vacay, company that Chris and I own. I want to be discreet and not discreet, undiscreet and transparent about that because we believe in the products and we want everyone to try them. Give them a shout out. We would appreciate it. Official sponsor of the Radcast. My friend, we do have some social holidays that I just didn't think could be missed today. There's their important ones. Oh, well, <laughs> fill me in, please. Yeah. Don't let me miss out on these. I don't want you to miss out at all. So um, you got Sunday is World Logic Day. So logic. First, I was like, is this the rapper? <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think it's just more. I think it's more uh, logic day. So I don't want any illogical discussion or talk on Sunday in my life. And I'm all, I'll, I'll be in Mexico. It'll, so there'll be a lot of illogical talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe, hey, actually, it all makes sense then, Chris. You know, my kids trying to do stuff. This, the place we're going supposedly has like the largest uh, water park in Mexico. So uh, nice. I don't know if that means a good thing or a bad thing. You know, I don't have a good scale of what water parks normally would be, you know, but in Mexico. But suppose this is it's true. Us, you know, um, that could be really large or really small. Out. I don't know. But uh, we'll see. There won't, there'll be a, no logic for the offers, but for everyone else, World Logic Day on Sunday. Um, I, I, of course, Monday, which is part of the Reds, we're going MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, national holiday. Great time. And you know, a great man that did a lot of great things for the country. So do want to miss that. That is 15th. No, uh, all jokes put aside for that. Um, I, you know, the 16th is, uh, is the last one. I'll, I'll <laughs> the 16th and 17th, the 16th is the international hot and spicy food day. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful pun intended, but, uh, literally I love spicy food. So yeah, maybe I'll have some on Tuesday in Mexico. It sounds like I had some spicy Mexican last night. So ah, there you go. And then the 17th, for the 16th. Yeah, the 17th, which is next Wednesday, I believe. If my math is right. I, I think my days are getting a little jangled, but maybe that's right. Uh, or Thursday. I don't know. Anyway, I think it's, no, it's Wednesday because today's the 10th. Today's the 10th when we're recording this show. Just for full transparency, we do record a couple days ahead of time sometimes, but um, we release on the twelfth. That's why you hear the the date changes there. A little insider tip: we like transparency here on the show. We're not trying to hide anything. You know, it's impossible for us to record it all on that morning and get it out to you at five a.m. We do not get up at one a.m., Chris. We can admit that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't even be getting up. I would just be staying up if we were doing that at that point. Exactly. But January 17th, ditch your resolution day. <laughs> I'm like, hell decided, like, what nerd came up with this one? Could it not be like March 17th or something? Like, we're going to, we're just going right, to, we're going to we throw gotta, those owl in on the 17th. <laughs> right. You, I stuck to it for two and a half weeks. I'm ditching it. Yeah. All right. Oh, come on. You can work on it a little bit longer, right? All right. Yeah, uh, come on, man. Yeah. There you Don't go. celebrate that day. Don't celebrate that day. We don't want you to do that. Amazon, I, I did want to mention this. So pretty big deal happening on the 29th. If you have Amazon Prime, everyone, I mean, 200 million Americans, I would say 99% of people listening probably have Amazon Prime. You want that two-day free shipping. It used to be. It's not always two-day anymore if you pay attention. But I'll uh, save that uh, soapbox for another day. But uh, they, you get Prime Video. Well, on the 29th, they're going to start showing ads to everyone on Prime Video. And it's going to change the game for a lot of reasons. Because, number one, you can pay $3 if you don't want to get the ads. But, look, who? how many people are really going to pay the $3 to not get the ads once it's already there? It's one thing if you had to make a change to or signing up for it. But they're just going to unlock it. People are just going to kind of start dealing with it. And so I think it's going to change the game with streaming ads and things like that. Because, look, the scale and scope that Amazon has and how many people watch, there's the football, other things that are on there, 
suddenly you're going to have an ad experience within Amazon Prime Video. You're going to see a ton of advertisers there, and it is a pretty decent opportunity because of the scale and scope. How many freaking people are on the platform? So that happens on the 29th of January, Chris. So if you're an Amazon Prime person, which most people are, and you watch Amazon Video, be ready for I some do. ads because they're coming. Are you a Amazon Video person? I am. Yeah, I, I rotate between them, but I I I use it for sure. So I'm I'm not pumped for this, but I probably will be one of those to pay because I did that with Hulu when they had ad or no ad. But you made those well, big, right. those I, big Benjamins. You can afford that three dollars a month. <laughs> never know but i agree with you i think how it's just being implemented yeah i'm not going to immediately do it like i'll be like all right let's see what it let's see what it's about but exactly I think, see if they are, how relevant those ads are if they're getting you you right. know you know all those uh that good lubrication that you like or if it's the you know the body butter and the uh full body oh, man's yeah. deodorant <laughs> Yes, I love that. <laughs> Let's see how good they're targeting us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, that uh, that eyebrow removal kit, you know, like all that oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, all my favorite things. All your favorite things. <laughs> it's like Oprah's, Chris's favorite things. If they, uh, if they serve you up the right ads. It will be interesting how uh, targeted they are. If they're, uh, yeah. or if it's just like spray and pray, like, everything like is it going to be like cable tv or is it going to be more like instagram is what i'm i'm kind of yeah as far as targeting yeah we'll see i think uh you're going to see a lot of pre-roll post-roll like on the videos that you click on you have to watch a video you're going to watch an ad for it to click on like right now like when you watch they already have ads in the football game because it's you know it's broadcast like normal but you're going to see like whenever you click on a video you're probably going to get an ad you might get a mid-roll that means like halfway through the video or whatever you're watching programming, you get ads built in. And, but I will say this could be an opportunity. I'm hoping they keep it affordable, you know, for small to medium sized brands to run ads within it, you know, versus, you know, your traditional TV costs. Yeah. So I'd pay attention to that and pay attention to the numbers. We'll talk about it here. We'll keep talking about it and see. We'll probably be trialing it for a few of the companies we work with here at the agency. Let you know how it goes. The uh, couple things to finish out. I don't know if you're a big electric car person. Honda announces a new line of electric cars, the Honda Zero Series. Honda's introduced two concept vehicles, part of the upcoming Zero Series at the CES show in Las Vegas. The Honda Zero Series will begin production in 26, featuring a new H logo as Honda's transition to electric vehicles. Wow, that's really progressive there. <laughs> Going to the H logo for Honda. I wonder how they got there. The company, having invested forty billion, only that's B with a that's a B but B B billion, aims to introduce thirty new electric vehicles globally by twenty thirty. Honda previously announced plans to exclusively sell zero emission vehicles. The unveiling of the Zero Series reflects the automaker's commitment to advance. I mean, I brought this up because I thought everything's moving electric. It seems like for good, bad, or indifferent. I don't know how I feel about it because I really enjoy my gasoline guzzling uh, loud V8. Same. But, but Same. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't, if I could be convinced that it's really killing the environment, don't want to kill it, no. But I'm not convinced that uh, producing batteries generates less uh, issues than uh, gas, though. I think that's the big debate. I see a lot of Teslas getting picked up off the side of the interstate. I know. They're running out of battery or whatever. It's just, I'm not there yet. They're cool. I I just, not for me. Yeah. Not yet. I think uh, it's been oversold so far. I think everything's, everything's yeah. promoted there. I don't know if the demand is quite there yet. But like everything else, we think it's coming before it actually does. Uh, and it takes a lot longer for those types of transitions and for us to uh, get over our uh, V8s, our loud motors. I like revving mine up. <laughs> I, like, I like the sound of a nice engine. 
Yes. For sure. I know. I think that's all we have today on our marketing and business news. Uh, any final words, Chris? I hope everyone is off to a great new year and uh, stick to your resolutions. Yeah. Don't, don't ditch them don't on January ditch them. 17th. Yeah. Don't ditch them at all. But at least wait till March or April yeah. if you're going yeah. to. Yeah. At least make it through the first quarter. Like, <laughs> I know. Come on, dude. I can't believe we have a holiday. I mean, that's all the American way. No, we have social holidays for everything and, you know, ditch your holiday. Maybe, it, maybe it's like ditch it for a day, which eh, I still think is a little early. But uh, yeah, like, bro, you don't need to break two and a half weeks and go to the gym. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Or whatever it is your your resolution is. But yeah, no, I just hope everyone's off to a great new year. Staying, staying warm and safe. Yes. Warm, safe and dry. And you might just have to move down to Miami with Chris to uh, experience all those at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on down. Yeah. I don't know about safe, but <laughs> yeah, well. You know, if they're literally coming to the vacate lounge, that would be, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The only fear might be storm licking them to death. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> be a loud bark followed by a lick. Exactly. Hey, guys, you know where to find us, theradcast.com. More news coming next week on our new show title and new schedule. That will be next week. So more news on that. The radcast.com, though, is where you find everything and all the highlight clips from today, all our other episodes. We've got some great guests coming up. We've had some great guests this week. If you didn't listen to this week's episode, you go hit the back button. Dr. Joel, you gotta, this is my longevity doctor. You got to listen to that episode. Chris and I interviewed uh, Joel and really got into like medicine, like the way it's taught. And then, of course, like some of the practices that are coming into longevity, how to live not only a long life, but a long life well, which is the key. So hit the back button and check that out. And if you didn't check out the episode with Dr. With Dave Asprey, yeah, you need to go back to the Bulletproof. Mr. Bulletproof, very insightful. Look, we got the doc. We're kicking off the new year. About health, wellness, about resolutions. We want to live longer. We want, we want the hacks. We want the medicine. And... You know you want the vacay. V-A-Y-C-O-I. The only way to truly vacay. For Chris Hansen in Miami, I'm Ryan Alford. We'll see you next time on the Radcast. To listen or watch full episodes, visit us on the web at theradcast.com or follow us on social media at our Instagram account, the.rad.cast or at Ryan Alford. Stay radical. Stay radical.